quietly, please. And the next item of business is members' business debate on motion 16795 in the name of Bill Kidd on International Workers' Memorial Day 2019. And this debate will be concluded without any questions being put. May I ask those who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons. And I call on Bill Kidd to open the debate. May I request again silence from those who are leaving the gallery. Thank you. I call on Bill Kidd to open the debate for around seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Um, I'm pleased, very pleased indeed, to bring forward the topic of International Workers' Memorial Day 2019. I'm grateful for the MSP. Excuse me, the Mr. Chamber. Kidd. Excuse That's me, right. Mr. Kidd. Would you sit down, all please? Right. May I ask those who are leaving the gallery to please do so quietly? There is parliamentary business proceeding. Thank you. Please, if you would start again, Mr. Kidd, for around seven minutes. Thank you again, uh, Presiding Officer. And as I say, I'm pleased to bring forward the topic of International Workers Memorial Day 2019. I'm grateful for. MSPs here in the chamber, for uh, those who are going to be participating and those uh, with showing an interest. And this, the contributions to this debate are something which follow on from last night where I, um, I held a, an event on behalf of Scottish Hazards uh, and International Workers Memorial Day. And it was an extremely interesting and well attended uh, event and I'm very grateful to members from across uh, the chamber who actually uh, came along and contributed. Um, International Workers Memorial Day has been held on the 28th of April every year since 1989. This year it falls on Sunday so I'm grateful to be um, able to hold this debate today and every year this day brings us together to remember the dead and fight for the living. It is my hope that this debate goes some way in grasping both aspects of this powerful statement that has been shared since the first Workers Memorial Day was held 30 years ago. And we have the opportunity now to remember those who lost their lives far too early and we can, confirm, we can infer, affirm actions taken to ensure that the mistakes or negligence that led to premature deaths are not repeated. We are lucky to live in a country where health and safety is taken seriously, but the continued examples of people made ill through work and of those who have died shows us that more needs to be done. For example, it is estimated that in the UK, 50,000 workers die every year from work-related illnesses. Causes include cancers, lung disease, heart disease, neurological diseases. Added to this tragic figure is the 1,500 workers who die in work-related incidents and accidents. This year, unions and workers' rights organisations will use International Workers Memorial Day to focus on the impact of dangerous chemicals in the workplace, particularly cancer-causing carcinogens. By doing so, these organisations highlight that changes still need to be made and that workers' rights must be taken seriously. In the 21st century, we are now equipped with knowledge and understanding that we did not have in the past. This enables us to be more responsive in tackling or preempting issues that affect the health of workers here in Scotland. This greater understanding means that we have greater responsibility in ensuring the safety of workers. As I say, last night I was delighted to host Scottish Hazards at the Scottish Parliament where the event was held to mark the 28th of April. Scottish Hazards are an organisation committed to improving the occupational health and safety of workers and they do a huge amount in their capacity as members of the Health and Safety Executive uh, FAST partnership in, complementing, uh, in complement with their parliamentary stall a few weeks ago, Scottish Hazards used yesterday's event to communicate important information with MSPs about workers' rights. They have welcomed the establishment of the Scottish Fair Work Convention and the publication of the Scottish Government's Fair Work, Act, Fair Work Action Plan, particularly with regard to the plan's emphasis on the Scottish Government's commitment to partnership. The contribution of Scottish hazards to this Parliament has always been very useful, particularly as 
as in last night, they highlighted information on dangerous chemicals in the workplace and evidenced how these chemicals pose threats to the health of many workers across Scotland and throughout the rest of the world. I'm also thankful for the work of the Trade Union Congress, the STUC's partner organisation, who have also been working hard to spread information about the dangers of workplace carcinogens. The TUC compiled empirical evidence on the prevalence and harmful impacts of two of the most dangerous carcinogens facing workers in this country, namely asbestos, a fibre that when inhaled can cause cancer and constitutes the biggest cause of workplace deaths in the UK, and diesel exhaust, which follows as the second biggest workplace killer. Although asbestos was banned in 1999 from being imported into the UK, its dangers are still with us. Around 5,000 people this year alone are likely to die prematurely because of asbestos exposure. Clydeside Action on Asbestos has worked over many years to ensure representation of those affected by asbestos-related diseases, as well as raising awareness of these terrible illnesses. Asbestos-containing materials such as lagging around pipes and boilers can be found in half a million non-domestic premises and consequently are likely to be in workplaces built before the turn of the millennium. This means that people working in maintenance, refurbishment or demolition can be exposed if fibres become dislodged during the course of their work. The Health and Safety Executive estimate that 1.3 million tradespeople are at risk of exposure and could come into contact with asbestos on average more than 100 times a year. This risk of exposure reinforces the importance of health and safety regulation and the need to ensure that workers' safety is prioritised. Estimates show that diesel exhaust, the second biggest workplace killer, can contain up to 14 known carcinogens and can also contain, contain 12 chemicals or chemical compounds that have been found as probable carcinogens to humans. These chemicals can be inhaled in the form of gases or tiny dust particles. And diesel exhaust is produced not only by motor vehicles, but is also produced anywhere there is a diesel engine, such as from a generator or pump. Those most at risk include professional drivers and those who work in warehouses, garages, construction, seafaring, underground and maintenance. Workers who are regularly exposed to diesel exhaust fumes can be 40% more likely to develop lung cancer. Conservative estimates show that prolonged exposure is responsible for 800 cases of bladder and lung cancer a year in the UK, and this leads to up to 650 deaths a year. Inhalation of fumes can also worsen respiratory diseases such as bronchitis or may aggravate existing heart disease. The issues I've focused on are ones that we know to be highly relevant to Scotland and indeed to the rest of the UK. Across the world, however, the United Nations estimates that more people are killed in work-related incidents and illness than by war. Imagine the headlines we would see if the same amount of people were dying from a catastrophe or a war. The sobering reality is that these premature deaths could and can be avoided with the enforcement of better safety standards. And we owe it to the families and friends of those who have lost their lives due to their work to recognize International Workers' Memorial Day. And we must continue to remember the dead, learn lessons, and take part in the fight for the living. Thank you very much. Can I say to those in the public gallery, we'd prefer it if you didn't show appreciation or otherwise. Thank you very much. And we move on to the open debate. And um, we're really pushed for time, so uh, no more than four minute speeches, please. Brian Whittle, followed by Fulton McGregor. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I thank uh, Bill Kidd for bringing this uh, debate to the Chamber and also for, for hosting the event last night. Going to work every day, uh, spending a working day in a safe environment and coming home every day seems a pretty reasonable request to me. Requiring employers to ensure the safety of the, the, the workforce and in a working environment, again, seems a reasonable ask. 
apart from anything else, uh, looking after your staff is to the benefit of the company performance. Now, I attended the, the International Memorial Workers Day last night and, and listened uh, to the discussions around the table. Um, I've got to say it was a real eye-opener. Uh, of course, we all know there are employers out there who cut corners and put their employees at risk for profit. False economy, in my view, but to hear the scale of workplace injury and death it was quite disconcerting. And health and safety work, in my view, has undoubtedly improved. But while listening to the presentations on the screens that were there, appeared an incident where a worker died on the Ardeer site in 2002. And I worked there in the mid-80s. And we were discussing the, 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 the dangerous chemicals. Now, my job uh, back then was to test explosives. But an interesting life. Um, now, as you can imagine, the, 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 the protocols for handling those, that, those kind of, of, of chemicals is extremely high, and the training required for that uh, uh, is extremely arduous. But what was interesting to me, and I was discussing this with, with, with Bill Kidd uh, last night, was the chemicals that we used to use, the solvents that we used to use uh, within uh, that environment, we used to dispose of uh, what was called the solvent room. And that was just basically we come down with, with, uh, uh, with, with our, 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 uh, the, the stuff that we used and just pour them into bottles, just huge big bottles. And the floor used to swim with, with uh, solvent, solvent dichloromethane and, and, and acetone, etc. And I remember once, uh, actually, my, my shoes uh, disintegrating. And going to report this to my manager. And at the time, his response to me was, you need to buy better shoes. And I would, hope, I would have hoped that uh, since then, that, that, that uh, safety protocols uh, uh, and health and safety had moved on, as I'm sure it has. But it was rather disconcerting to note that that, that uh, incident in the Ardeer factor, factory was in 2002. My other interest here lies in uh, the health healthcare sector and, and, and looking after mm -hmm. worker safety. Uh, there, I think everybody knows uh, my interest in health, especially around mental health uh, and, and creating an environment where our healthcare, our healthcare workers can have a, a, an active, healthy lifestyle. So I think, I think that, that's an area that I'm, I'm really interested in, not, not just because I happen to have a daughter who works within uh, that environment. So I think while we acknowledge that health and safety uh, at work is improving, uh, and we work it, as, as Bill Kidd says, we are in a country where we take it seriously. There's an awful lot more work we need to do. The fact that, as, as, as Bill Kidd says, 50,000 people are killed each year through work-related incidents or illnesses is somewhere where we need to create, we need to do more work. So once again, I'm going to thank uh, Bill Kidd for bringing this to the chamber and also welcome and support the work that organisations continue to do to ensure worker safety and highlight where poor safety is an issue. Deputy Presiding Officer. Wilton McGregor, followed by Neil Finlay. Hey, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, and I'd like to also take this opportunity to, to thank Bill Kidd for bringing this uh, very important um, debate to the, to the Chamber. And it's a great honour to again be able to to speak in this debate, and I, and I will apologise to the Chamber in advance for speaking in this debate uh, every year, so um, I, might, I might say some of the, the same things, but I think it's important that, and I know that my colleague um, Elaine Smith will, will agree with on this, that I think it's important that the representative for Coat Bridge and Chrysan, um does speak in this debate when it's brought forward, because um, my constituency is a proud uh, uh, industrial heritage with strong traditions in the coal, iron and steel industries, and Working in such heavy industries was frequently uh, dangerous, as, uh, as people know, with little safeguarding in place to protect those workers. And many of my uh, people in my constituency have direct experience of workplace loss, the effects of which are felt by, by all in future generations. And like most people who, who come from the area, I come from a family with a, a strong and proud industrial working past. And I know I've mentioned in the chamber before, and I'm, I'm really proud of his past, but my maternal uh, grandfather uh, worked across, uh, worked from the age of 14. And, uh, places like Gap Course, Got Sherry and the Calder and I know that he himself was injured at, at points and, and knew others that were but, uh, the, but the, it wasn't as highlighted um, back then and actually just a wee sort of personal story um, at the weekend there I had the, the, the kids down at uh, Drumpelia Locks and there's actually a wee part there which has got one of the old 
or one of the last bits of steel work from um, from Gap Kosh there in, in, in memory, and I was able to explain a wee bit to, to my five-year-old. I don't know how much it took in, but it's good that these things are there and traditions can be passed down. Um, but Poseidon Officer, probably the most prominent example of such a devastating loss in, in my area, um, it concerns the loss of 47 lives due to a fire in a, in a local uh, coal mine. And that was in the 18th of September 1959, nearly 60 years ago, where 47 men lost their lives, 41 women became widows and 76 children lost their fathers. And it was in that morning, the early shift at the Auchin Geek Mine in Moody'sburn, 48 men in total clocked into work as normal. And as normal, all boarded a series of trains or bogies, which were to convey them to the coalface, hundreds of feet underground, all of them unaware of the deadly sequence of events that were about to take place. And I think it's important that even although I've taken that particular paragraph from last year's speech, that I'll make no apology for doing so every year in these, in these debates that I can speak in them. Um, because I think it's important that we remember them. And I know that this year there will be, is the 60th anniversary, and is, there's always a memorial service every year, but uh, I think it's going to be an extra special one this year. And I know that uh, Elaine Smith and, and Richard Leonard uh, also attend those uh, events where we all stand in unity for the people who, um, who lost their lives that day. And also, um, you know, um, keeping in the tradition of the, the constituency, this Sunday there will also be a workers' memorial um, event arranged by the North Lancashire Trade Unions Council, uh, held at Summerlee, and again, uh, Summerlee Industrial Museum. Again, this is a, uh, an annual event um, where um, parties who represent the area come together and we'll, we'll do so again um, this Sunday. I'll be going to that event and then straight out to, to party conference, um, presiding officer. And it's just worth saying again, the two signs at the front of Summerlee read, the past we inher inherit, future we build, and in memory of all those who lost their lives. Presiding officer, the day, the, the day itself is an international day for remembrance, an action for workers killed at work, and an opportunity for reflection and a commitment to change. And although I think Bill Kidd has articulated uh, well that the purpose of the day, but we can never, ever forget um, workers and people who lose their lives at work. Um, and I think that I, I, so much more I could say, presiding officer, as you could probably tell, but I know you said a strict um, ten, uh, four minutes. So I would just like to end by saying it's been a privilege to speak in this debate again on behalf of my constituency. Thank you very much. Neil Finlay, followed by John Finney. Thanks, President Officer, and I kind of declare an interest as a member of United Union and DIS. Um, I look forward to the day we don't have to mark uh, this uh, International Workers Memorial Day. I look forward to the day when workers do not die at work, and I look forward to the day where we have an economic system driven not by profit maximisation or that sees workers as a dispensable cog in a machine, but we have an economy based on social need and sustainability. But as long as we do have a system based around profit maximisation fuelled by deregulation. We will see workers killed and injured and made ill through work. And in International Workers Memorial Day will remain a necessary uh, date in the calendar. Every 15 seconds, a worker dies from a work-related accident or disease. So 16 workers uh, will have died during the course of my contribution alone uh, in February. A 21-year-old roofer, Nathan Craig, died in Edinburgh when he fell through a skylight working on a roof. Another son needlessly taken, leaving another grieving family and community. And lives like Craig shouldn't simply be just a statistic in a speech. There should be a call for action to prevent future fatality. And I'm very proud that the Labour Party, over the course uh, of our existence, has worked very closely with our brothers and sisters in the trade unions uh, to deliver huge improvements in health and safety. But we have a long, long way to go. Uh, so that work will continue in this parliament with Claire Baker bringing forward her culpable homicide bill and Daniel Johnson's protection of shop workers' bill, uh, bills. And I hope that all members will support them. I also think today it's right to put on record uh, our thanks to a, a number of people and organisations who have driven uh, or are driving uh, change in this area. Uh, first of all, I put on record my uh, thanks to my friend and one of my great mentors, Jim Swan, the former uh, trade union convener at British Leyland in Bathgate, who was instrumental in bringing Workers' Memorial Day 
uh, to Scotland. Uh, last night, we uh, were speaking to, with Cathy Jenkins, Dean Tasker, Scott Donoghue uh, uh, from the Hazards campaign, and I pay tribute to them, and Louise Taggart, who previously worked in the campaign. Uh, uh, also unite campaigners like Steve Dillon and Brian Simpson to trade unions like the RMT, TSSA and ASLEF for their work on rail safety, PCS for their recent work on the uh, Seaton campaign at the National Museum, Unison for their work in the NHS and local government and the FBU defending the fire service, the Baker's Union campaigning uh, against low pay and exploitation and to all of the trade unions campaigning to keep their members and the public safe. Um, this week, President Officer, uh, a great champion and advocate of Scottish workers, Sid Smith, retires from Thompson Solicitors, the law firm that represents many trade unions in Scotland. Uh, he represented uh, the trade union group at the Cullen Inquiry into Piper Alpha. He fought for justice for minors charged during the minor strike, and he has given evidence to many parliamentary committees and represented uh, the victims of the Lockerbie bombing and the Dun Dunblane tragedy. I think it's right and fitting that we, he is mentioned today and we pay tribute to his life's work uh, during this debate and I hope we all wish him well in his retirement. I have laid a motion to um, recognise his contribution. I hope that members uh, will support it. This Sunday uh, in Bathgate I will stand uh, like many uh, with w uh, women and men uh, from my region to remember those who have died or have been injured unnecessarily because of their work. And collectively, I know many of us will stand to mourn the dead and fight for the living. John Finney, followed by James Kelly. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, like others, I'd like to thank Bill Kidd for bringing uh, this motion here and for hosting last night's event. And um, thank Scottish Hazards, indeed, and the entire trade union movement for the, this tremendous work that they do in relation to, to workplace health and safety. Um, the figures have already been quoted. 50,000 people are killed through work-related incidents or illness. And if we look, that's the equivalent of the entire population of Cumbernauld, Dunfermline, Kirkcaldy or Ayr each year in the UK alone. And uh, the important, uh, lots of important words in here. Of course, memorial uh, is important, we remember. And I think there is an international bond of workers that needs to be recognised. And sometimes think, what is it we can do? What, c what can we do in practical terms? And uh, um, from the website, Remember the Dead, fight like hell for the living, um, I, I, I would commend a, a press release from the 23rd of April. And something we can all do as parliamentarians here is... Um, listen to what the European Trade Union Tra Confederation are saying, and they quote the figure of 200,000 uh, deaths across the European Union each year. And that is the call that they're making uh, for the European Union, in particular the new European Parliament to be elected in May and the new Commission to be appointed following elections, to set a target of zero workplace cancer uh, um, and uh, introduce a directive on stress at work. Because, of course, people very readily understand physical injury caused by work. The mental stress, and we, we are aware of the, the pressure that people are under and feel under at work, workplace bullying incidents, and many of the issues that uh, um, my colleague Neil Finlay refers to there, the pressure for profit and the, the willingness of some unscrupulous employers to set aside the well-being of the people who earn them that profit um, just to generate further profit. So another thing that they want to do is introduce a directive to tackle back, knee and finger joint and other musculoskeletal pain. Um, and launch a, a debate in preventing work-related road deaths and work-related suicide with a view to taking measures in the lifetime of the new parliament. So I would hope, I certainly my intention, I just picked that up this morning, my intention will be to ensure that uh, Scottish Green candidates support these measures and I, I, I would hope that others would do likewise. Now, um, mention's been made of Thompson solicitors and in preparation for this uh, <coughs> debate, I had a, a look and I came across a blog written by Patrick Maguire last year. <coughs> Patrick, many will know, is a, a doughty fighter on behalf of of, of, of workers and the cause of justice. And I think he, uh, the one criticism I would have of his blog is he wrongly chides himself in relation to the very matter that uh, he says it's uh, um, a, a cause of regret that he's been unable to achieve um, getting proper legislation on the statute book. Um, he talks about the Corporate Manslaughter Homicide Act and uh, 
talks about uh, UK legislation applicable in Scotland. In the subsequent 10 years, absolutely nothing has changed. There has not been a single prosecution in Scotland under the Act. Workplaces are not safer. Workplace accidents, injuries and deaths have not decreased. The 2007 Act was and is a waste of time effort. And I thought an, an interesting word, emotion. Um, so, um, I, like others, I, I, I would commend uh, the Claire Baker's uh, initiative. Uh, I, I think it's important that we find common ground in this, but I think it's important to say too that we've had a, a, a fairly recent UK Prime Minister who commended slaying the health and safety monster. There is a very residual uh, uh, presence of cynicism about workplace safety that needs to, to be addressed. Because if you value individuals, they value the, the labour the labor that they, they deliver. And, and as has been said, even if you were to take a more cynical, purely pound shillings and pence approach to things, uh, a safe and healthy workplace is a more productive workplace. And what we also know is very evidence is a unionised workplace is a safer workplace. So I think there's lessons for us all there. Thank you. James Kelly, followed by Stuart McMillan. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, I'd, like others, like to start by paying tribute to Bill Kidd for securing uh, this afternoon's very important debate on international commemorating, inter uh, commemorating International Workers' Day ahead of the actual day on uh, Sunday. I also want to pay tribute to the Scottish Hazards campaign other members have mentioned. Uh, in reflecting on this, I want to you know, look back on a, an incident that happened in the, the area that I represent, uh, Blantyre, which has got a strong mining tradition. On the 22nd of October 1877, there was an, an explosion at the Dixon's Pit uh, in Blantyre, and it killed over 200 people, uh, which had a devastating effect in the, the local area. And there's a, a local Blantyre project which are researching the incident in order to produce a book later this year. And they've listed all the all those who lost their life. And in looking at the, the list, you know, there's two, two things that strike me. Uh, the number of, you know, men uh, denoted as, as married who went to work that day and wouldn't return to their wives or families. And also the number of not even young men, but actually young boys, you know, their, their ages are listed, you know, 13, 15, 16. Um, you know, what a, what a dreadful thing to happen for so many people to die, but also so, so many young people. Uh, sadly, that wasn't the only uh, fatal incident in Blantyre, both in 1878 and 1879, there were subsequent disasters where people lost their lives. Um, and I think from that, uh, as I say, the area has got a strong mining tradition, um, but the people people drew on those incidents and they they drew very closely together as a community. And you can still see that today in Blantyre. Uh, if you look around the area, there are two uh, very distinct memorials uh, to the incident in 1877. One, one in High Blantyre up at the cross and one in the Blantyre uh, Miners' Welfare also. Um, I think from that, you know, there has been, we've seen greater trade union representation and improved protection uh, in the workplace, you know, which has been very much welcome in the century and a half, uh, century and a half since the 1877 incident at Blantyre. But uh, John Finney rightly poses the question, you know, what, what can we do about it? What can we do about it as parliamentarians? Uh, and as Neil Finlay pointed out, there are two members' bills, you know, currently been progressed through the Scottish Parliament. Uh, Claire Baker's bill on culpable homicide uh, highlights the fact that, I mean, many people have spoken about 50,000 people losing their lives as a result of workplace incidents uh, or workplace illnesses. Um, you know, one of the, the issues, and again, John Finney spoke about this, is that there's a lack of protection for people um, and the, the progression and the introduction and implementation of Claire Baker's bill would strengthen the law and strengthen the protection of those workers, as would the, the, the legislation that's been put forward by Daniel Johnson on protection of shop workers. 
uh, we're unfortunately seeing an increasing number of these incidents. There have been a number of, of them reported recently in West and Central Scotland. So there's an opportunity not in this debate not only to reflect, but actually to make a difference by supporting two, two members' bills that have been considered by the Parliament currently. So I hope uh, members across the Chamber will take those points on board. Uh, just before I call Mr McMillan, I have three members who still wish to speak and, of course, the Minister. So, I'm minded to accept a motion under Rule 8.14.3 that the debate be extended by up to 30 minutes. And I would invite Bill Kidd to move the motion. It's so moved, President Officer. Thank you. Thank you. The question is that under Rule 8.14.3, the debate be extended by up to 30 minutes. Are we agreed? Thank you. That is then agreed. And I call Stuart McMillan to be followed by Jamie Halco johnson Thank you very much, President Officer, and uh, I too want to congratulate my friend and colleague Bill Kidd for securing this important debate. But remember the dead, fight for the living. This is what International Workers Memorial Day stands for. All over the world, workers are showing solidarity and are conducting events, demonstrations and vigils, campaigning for stricter enforcement and also higher penalties for breaches of health and safety laws. As uh, Bill Kidd uh, mentioned earlier on, uh, the fact that, uh, according to the United Nations, more people are killed at work than in wars. That's an astounding fact. These deaths don't occur uh, in sudden unexpected accidents, but with long-term negligence towards worker safety, uh, they are therefore leading to fatal illnesses such as mesothelioma, asthma and dermatitis. Now, this is disgraceful and it cannot continue. But tomorrow, uh, I'll be attending uh, an event in my own Greenwich and Inverclyde constituency for International Workers Memorial Day. Uh, remembering those in Inverclyde and beyond who have suffered due to the negligence of their employers. The theme of this year's Memorial Day is dangerous substances. Get them out of the workplace. Uh, as, uh, as others have spoken about, now this involves carcinogens, uh, a substance capable of causing cancer in living tissue. And examples of these are asbestos and diesel exhaust. Asbestos is the biggest cause of workplace deaths. And this year, 5,000 people are likely to die prematurely as a result of asbestos exposure. And although its use has been banned for 20 years, uh, asbestos-containing materials can still be found in around half a million workplaces in the UK. And there is no safe threshold uh, of exposure to asbestos fibres. Now, even the smallest of quantities over a short period of time can lead to mesothelioma several decades after exposure. And it's estimated that over 6 million tonnes of asbestos fibres were imported into Britain during the last century. Now, most of it is still here in workplaces, homes and buildings, meaning workers will continue to actually be exposed. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I am uh, I'm working to, uh, to bring forward my proposed recovery of medical costs for Industrial Disease Scotland Bill. Now, the purpose of the proposed bill is to ensure that the NHS doesn't foot the bill uh, for employers' negligence as it seeks to allow the recovery of costs associated with NHS treatment for industrial diseases caused by negligence. Now, the bill won't only claw back crucial monies for the NHS, but will also help to protect workers in the years to come. Now, the proposal was initiated by Clydeside Action on Asbestos, and I pay tribute to them uh, for that, but also for their dedication that they've shown over many, many years to help people and their families who have suffered through asbestos exposure. Uh, presenting officer, this year marks the, the 200th anniversary uh, of the death of James Watt, the, the Greenock-born inventor who improved the, 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 the steam engine, which was fundamental in leading the, the UK into the Industrial Revolution. Now, back in 1776, uh, he couldn't have been able to imagine what industry would be like in 2019. Now, like him, uh, we, uh, we may have no idea as to what's going to come in 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, but industries will arise uh, and they'll be completely different uh, and also there will be different occupational hazards uh, and workplace disease, diseases that we won't even know about yet. Uh, the bill that I'm taking forward will actually make sure that we're going to be ready for it with good measures to protect workers and also the taxpayer and the NHS. Presenting officer, to conclude, it, it's important that we mark International Workers Memorial Day to remember all those lives that were shortened due to their workplace. But it's also vital 
that we work to protect workers' health as best we can. Uh, and uh, we all deserve to work in a safe environment. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jamie Halcrow Johnson, followed by Elaine Smith. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I congratulate Bill Kidd on bringing this debate uh, to the Chamber and marking Workers' Memorial Day ahead of this Sunday's event. And just as Neil fin uh, Findlay mentioned, the Cullen Inquiry, I remember as a young boy, the um, Piper Alpha accommodation section sitting at uh, uh, Flotter Oil Terminal in, uh, in Orpheus. So um, I remember it was very, in Orkney, sorry, it was a very stark uh, reminder of the dangers that people do. And um, the oil and gas sector has seen a number of other uh, tragedies, including uh, in terms of helicopters and the like, uh, and hopefully improvements being made, but I think there's still more to be done on that. Uh, and this is obviously still a very important debate, given that uh, around the world thousands of people still die and suffer from injuries at work. And that's a disturbing, f a disturbing fact that should give us all pause for thought. We know well the history. Here in Scotland, we need only look at some of the great buildings and great feats of engineering to find them tinged with the memory of the people who died building them people who are at work and whose safety often seemed far from the minds of others. Remember, for example, the fourth bridge, which lies just a few miles from this parliament, and the names of 73 men recorded as having died in its construction. The youngest was a rivet catcher, David Clark, who was apparently only 13 years old when he lost his footing, falling to his death. And it seems outrageous today, but it took until 2012 before these workers were properly commemorated, sometimes before they were even recognized. It's important always to understand the working practices that have contributed to deaths and serious accidents. Yes, there will always be genuinely unforeseeable risks and genuine accidents. And yes, some employment will inevitably carry greater risk than others. But these realities must never serve as an excuse where foreseeable risks have not been managed, where accidents were waiting to happen, and where the safety of employees has been put on the back burner. It's now 45 years since the Health and Safety at Work Act became law. This was not a revolutionary change. There had been a variety of pre-existing regulations and bodies, but it did create an overarching principle that applies across employers. Since then, this approach has developed further across the UK, and we have come a long way, but there is more to do. Bill Kidd's motion touches on the people who have died from illness caused through their working conditions, the theme of this year's Workers' Memorial Day. There are still thousands living in work -related, with work-related illnesses, from exposure to asbestos, from work-related COPD and cancers, and thousands more who have died. Many of these diseases have laid dormant for decades, but as this year's theme points to, there are still cases where employees are exposed to dangerous substances in the workplace that can have considerable impact on their health. The TUC has quite properly raised a number of concerns about incidents of exposure and the action that can be taken by government, by employers, and by employees to reduce this risk. And we should be looking forward to a time where substances like asbestos are not just managed, but where they can be safely removed and cease to present a threat to individuals. Or diesel fumes, another issue that has been raised. These are notably more harmful than other types of exhaust fumes, and employers have plans in place to avoid exposure. Fortunately, we are looking forward to a future of low emissions and an end to diesel vehicles. This, of course, does not lessen the duty of employers in the interim. I'd also like to briefly touch on mental health. Where support is lacking, mental health issues can cause significant problems in the workplace, including long absences. In many cases, too, we know that these issues can lead to death. It is in everyone's interest that support and a preventative approach is in place. Unfortunately, our mental health services are often overstretched, and individuals here in Scotland can be left waiting months before even relatively basic support can be provided. Warm words about the focus on mental health have for too long failed to lead to genuine action. Deputy Presiding Officer, our history with protecting people in the workplace has what been one of gradual progress, uh, progressive improvement. While we mark and remember those who have died at work, we should learn the lessons of the past and the importance of adapting them to a changing and modernizing workplace. Thank you. The last of the open debate contributions is from Elaine Smith. Thank you, President Officer. And can I just say at the start, I have a declared interest regarding past trade union assistance, and I'm a member of Unite the Union. And like others, I would like to thank Bill Kidd for bringing the motions for debate ahead of International Workers' Memorial Day on Sunday, April 28th, um, thus giving us all the opportunity to remember the people in this country and around the world killed in the workplace or by work. 
It also reminds us of the need to do whatever is in our power to constantly seek improvement in the working conditions of people in Scotland and right across the world and remind ourselves uh, too that this is a class issue. That's a point that Neil Finlay touched upon in his contribution. And as in previous years, events will be held in local communities all around Scotland to mark the occasion. And I'm pleased that following my request to the government in 2008, the Scottish Government also officially recognised International Workers' Memorial Day. In a country with a rich industrial heritage, the day has added poignancy as many communities will have been affected by some sort of industrial tragedy in the past. And given its extend, extensive industrial history, the central Scotland region I represent is particularly affected by such tragedies. And as mentioned by Fulton McGregor, this year uh, on the 18th of September marks the 60th anniversary of the Ockengay Colliery disaster where 47 men lost their lives. This tragedy affected a great many families in the area, including my own family. Presiding officer, in the past, um, I've spoken at the memorial event held annually on International Workers' Memorial Day in Cote Bridge at Summerlee Heritage Park, um, a point also made by Fulton McGregor. And as I've said many times in this chamber, Summerlee is well worth a visit. It's preserved and interpreted the history of the local iron, steel, coal and engineering industries and the lives of the people and the communities that depended on them for a living. So I would urge people to pay a visit to Summerlee if they can. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to attend this year's event, but I would like to take this opportunity to commend LUTC for organising it and I wish them all the best for the commemoration event at the weekend. It's important to remember that most workers killed at work didn't die in big major disasters and as noted in Bill Kidd's motion the theme of this year's International Workers Memorial Day is dangerous substances get them out of the workplace and the main focus of this topic is workers exposure to carcinogens a key cause, cause of cancer. There's a wide range of known carcinogens which Bill Kidd mentioned some of them including tobacco smoke asbestos fibres which have also been discussed uh, diesel fumes and a wide range of chemicals used in the workplace I think that the nature of the disease means it's impossible really to get an accurate figure for uh, people diagnosed with cancer, which is caused by their working conditions. However, the Health and Safety Executive estimates that there are around 13,500 new cases of cancer caused by work every year with over 8,000 deaths. Now, I think that's likely to be an underestimation um, as there are many causes suspected but not yet proven. And as we've heard, there's also other health problems exacerbated, such as asthma um, and bronchitis. So whilst trade unions and organisations like Scottish Hazards lead the way in campaigning for safe conditions, including the minimisation of exposure to dangerous substances in the workplace, we should all take an interest in safe working conditions and in holding employers to account. This Parliament, as an employer and a visitor's attraction, should be setting a clear example in ensuring that no hazardous substances, um, including lacquer, for example, should be used um, improperly on these premises. Finally, um, I recently submitted a consultation response for my colleague Claire Baker's culpable homicide bill, which has been uh, mentioned by other people, other members, and I encourage others to do so as well and to support the bill. So can I just finish by saying that uh, once again, I congratulate Bill Kidd as we remember the dead and fight for the living. Thank you. Now call on Jamie Hepburn to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, President Officer. Can I also join with others in congratulating Bill Kidd for bringing this debate to the Scottish Barn and all members for their considered contributions to the Scottish Government. Of course, it continues to provide its support for International Workers Memorial Day as we collectively reflect on the impacts of lives lost due to work. Scotland does continue to have one of the the best occupational health and safety records in Europe, but we would all recognise and agree that one workplace fatality is one too many. Work-related deaths and injuries take an incredible toll in the, the families of those affected, on work colleagues, on emergency service personnel called to respond to them, and indeed the wider community as well. And that community impact was brought starkly into focus by James Kelly when he reminded us very clearly of the impact in the Blantyre community from the various uh, incidents such as Dixon Pitt that he mentioned, as did Fulton McGregor and Elaine Smith when they 
reminders, reminded us that this year is the 60th anniversary of that terrible Ochengich disaster, something that actually directly impacted the area that I represent. There is a memorial to the men from Kundorit that killed at Ochengich in at the at centre of Kundorit, which uh, is a memorial to uh, the six uh, families uh, who were uh, left bereft by the loss of their loved ones in that uh, terrible uh, accident. In remembering these incidents, though, as important as is, I thought Neil Finlay made a very uh, important point. He reminds us that this is not just a matter of history. This is an ongoing struggle. And in that context, it is right that we continue to have debates of this nature and continue our efforts. We as a government believe that the, the best outcomes are achieved by a collaboration and partnership working. The Partnership on Health and Safety in Scotland is a, a good example of that, bringing uh, together a, a wide range of different partners uh, together. And in this case, uh, representatives of the, the Scottish Health and Safety System, trade unions, employer bodies, regulatory bodies, amongst others. The Scottish Plan for, on act, uh, for Action on uh, Safety and Health is a, a long-term a commitment to partnership working across organisations and industries to tackle uh, those areas of greatest uh, concern, such as health and safety in the agriculture, waste management and social care industries. And we are uh, committed to continuing to provide employers access to advice on workplace health and safety through our Healthy Working Lives uh, initiative. Uh, there are, uh, uh, of course, particular uh, types of employment and industries that show poorer health and safety outcomes. And these tend to be associated uh, with uh, lower paid and often poorer quality uh, work. The large number of people in the, uh, what we're calling increasingly the gig uh, economy are particularly at risk when you, especially when you uh, consider that they are uh, often treated as self-employed and not have access to health and safety expertise and protection. We uh, remain committed to improving unacceptable working conditions regardless of their status, sector, or location as part of the, the Fair Work agenda uh, that we are taking forward that uh, Bill Kidd uh, mentioned at the outset of the debate. Collaborative working is central to the promotion of fair work and ensuring all employers understand the benefits of an effective employee voice. Engaging with uh, the workforce and workplace health and safety is an essential part of that process. Drawing on the knowledge and expertise of any workforce can play significant dividends in safety, but also efficiency and productivity. And that it highlights Brian Whittle's point about the inherent benefit, not just the obvious benefit for employees, but actually also for employers as well in engaging in uh, that fair work uh, agenda. Uh, this uh, last year has uh, seen the European Agency for Safety and Health at Work run a, a campaign focused on managing dangerous substances with a, a strong emphasis on exposure to carcinogenic materials, something Bill Kidd, Jamie Halkford Johnson and Stuart McMillan raised as a particular issue. The campaign has seen collaboration across European nations to identify the nature of hazards, how these can be mitigated and to share good practice. This illustrates the importance, I believe, of working in international cooperation on such matters. Briefly, yes. Neil Finlay. I wonder if during his speech he'll uh, confirm whether the government will be supporting Claire Baker's bill, Daniel Johnson's bill, and indeed uh, Mr Halko Johnson's bill as well. Uh, Jamie well of course, we will give full consideration to legislation. Any legislation, of course, has to be considered on its specifics, and it's incumbent on uh, us as an administration to consider that very carefully. So I give that uh, commitment to... Uh, Mr Finlay and to every uh, member of uh, the Scottish uh, Parliament. Most of uh, the point I was going to, to go on to make, uh, because I'm trying to place this in its international context, given it is a, an a international uh, day, uh, most of our uh, domestic uh, workplace health and safety regulation has arisen by the cooperation of member states across the European Union over the last number of decades. We know that the, the UK government has it apparently set out that it is committed to maintaining uh, existing standards, uh, putting some of uh, those of us who may be cynical about that, putting our cynicism aside, and also the, the reality that governments change uh, aside. Uh, there is a concern that uh, a UK outside the EU uh, runs the risk of being left behind on uh, improving health and safety uh, standards without the ability to, to share the, the range and depth of expertise which membership 
and Abel's. And John Finney made a, a very useful point in that regard when he talks about the European wide trade union uh, activity, which, if successful, may mean that the UK, out with the EU, isn't part of that uh, process. Uh, we also, if I have time, yes, of course. Elaine Smith. Thank you. I thank the Minister very much for taking the intervention. I wonder if we'd also recognise that it was uh, trade unions from their very inception that championed health and safety issues. Jamie Hepburn. Yes, I have no hesitation in doing so. I don't think we should just uh, think about it in terms of their inception. That is their ongoing uh, role. It's a role that we recognise uh, as a, a government, and that's why we are strongly, so strongly supportive of uh, the trade union uh, movement and trying to work with them as uh, partners in terms of continually uh, better implementing the Fair Work Agenda. And, of course, health and safety is uh, a critical element of that. I just want to finish uh, on one final point, if I may, uh, presiding officer, because it was a useful point made by Stuart McMillan, because he referred to the fact that we live in a, a changing a world, a changing uh, economy, which, of course, brings opportunities for us, but also many challenges as well. Uh, he referred to the changing nature of work, uh, in particular technological change, which will continue to impact on the, the types of jobs needing to be done and who does them. Our, our workforce uh, continues to age, so employers need to understand what that means for them and how they can support an older workforce to remain safe, healthy and productive. So how we continue, continue to consider this agenda in changed circumstances will be important. We do, though, present officer, have a good record on workplace health and safety, but it is not, sadly, an unblemished one. As people gather at memorials around the country to mark International Workers' Memorial Day, we should reflect on both the journey made to get to this point and the sacrifices that have had to be made on the way in order to learn the lessons. Despite our best efforts, there is still no guarantee that any individual can go to work and return home safely at the end of the day. International Workers' Memorial Day reminds us that the work must go on. Thank you. That concludes the debate and the meeting is suspended until half past two.